how's it going guys? All that footage you just saw was shot using the all new 1DX Mark III at 5.5K RAW. Jake and I just picked up this new beast of a camera and we're excited to give you our thoughts and first impressions on this highly anticipated camera and how it compares to the now four year old 1DX Mark II and help you decide if it's worth upgrading from the Mark II from a video perspective. And just FYI, this video is not sponsored by Canon. We're just sharing our honest thoughts on cameras we personally use and things we're excited about and not so excited about. Jake, what were your first thoughts? So far, I gotta say I'm impressed. I'm coming from the 1DX Mark II, which I've used for the last year and a half and I've enjoyed it a ton. They kept everything that 1DX Mark II had and put it in the Mark III plus much, much more. My biggest gripe with the 1DX Mark II was just the outdated technology. After we bought the EOS R, going back to the 1DX Mark II just felt like we were going back in time. Plus, Parker and I were both tired of shooting with the 1.35 crop factor when shooting in 4K. So with the 1DX Mark III, Canon has stepped it up a ton, giving us more features, better specs, and probably the best overall image quality ever seen in a DSLR. Now, for those of you who don't know, the 1DX Mark III was built and designed first as a action photography camera, just like the 1DX Mark II. So the video capabilities were not the first priority, but we aren't going to dive too much into photography specs. We just wanna mainly focus on the video capabilities and how those meet our needs as videographers. First, let's talk about resolutions and color depth. Probably the biggest new feature that this camera is rocking is being able to shoot 5.5K 12-bit RAW internally at up to 60 frames per second. The problem though, is that if you do shoot in these settings, the file sizes are huge. With a 512 gigabyte CF Express card, you're looking at just 24 minutes of recording time at 60 frames per second, or 35 minutes at 24 frames per second. But the 1DX Mark III also comes with an HDMI mini port that you can use to record externally if needed. The 1DX Mark III can also record 10-bit 422 4K at up to 60 frames per second with Ken Log internally, which comes with 12 stops of dynamic range. And that is what we are shooting this interview on right now. And on a 512 gigabyte card, you can get two hours and 18 minutes shooting in 4K at 24 frames in 10 bit log. So it's a much more manageable file size and probably the size we'd usually choose for most of the content we shoot. They also give you an IBS option, which is three times more compressed. So you can film over six hours of 4K at 24 frames. So there's a lot more format options to choose from based on what you're filming compared to the Mark II, which maxes out at just 8-bit color depth, doesn't have a RAW option, no log option, no IBS option, so you always have to shoot huge 4K file sizes. Probably the next biggest feature of the 1DX Mark III over the Mark II is that it can also record in full frame in both 5.5K and 4K. This is the first time Canon has given us 4K at full frame in a DSLR body. However, there is a slight Canon cripple to be aware of if you're wanting full frame at 60 frames per second in 4K and 5.5K. Autofocus is no longer available. But if you bump that frame rate down to 30 frames per second or lower, you can shoot 5.5K or 4K full frame with autofocus. So basically out of these three features, full frame, 60 frames per second, and autofocus, you can only ever use two out of the three of those at any one time. So a little bit limiting, but still a big upgrade from the 1DX Mark II, which maxes out at 4K on a 1.35 crop. Keep in mind, you can still shoot 4K cropped at 60 frames per second with autofocus, just like the Mark II. So again, they didn't take any anything away that the Mark II can do, except for one thing. The 1DX Mark III cannot record 1080p at 24 frames per second. Sources say that Canon will be releasing this feature in an upcoming firmware update, but until then, no 1080p at 24 FPS. Now, as far as frame rates go, the 1DX Mark III did not improve on this, sadly. It still maxes out at 60 frames per second for 4K and 120 frames per second at 1080p. I feel like they could have put 120 frames at 4K and maybe 240 frames at 1080, but they didn't. The Mark III still maxes out at 120 frames at 1080p, but honestly, I personally never shoot at 120 frames anyway, because the 1080p is kind of soft on this camera and barely passable for professional commercial work, in my opinion. So again, I'm not sure why people would buy this and then shoot in 1080p. Now, as for autofocus, again, this camera was built primarily for sports photography, and it may just be one of the fastest autofocusing cameras out there, as the Mark III comes with 191 
points of focus compared to the 61 points of focus on the Mark II. The Mark III comes with new auto focusing options like large zone vertical, large zone horizontal, and eye tracking to go along with the facial tracking. And as you can see from our side-by-side -side comparison with the Mark II, Canon has improved the facial tracking to be smoother, faster, and more accurate. Eye tracking is a new feature that wasn't in the Mark II, but has made an appearance in firmware updates for the EOS R. Canon also added focus peaking to this camera that works when the camera is set to manual focus, which is another feature that many people were wanting. Our team personally uses autofocus for almost everything, but having focus peaking for manual focus is a great tool for many situations, so we're excited to be able to use that as well. Another new feature we're loving is digital image stabilization. Unfortunately, the 1DX Mark III did not come with IBIS, but at least they threw in digital image stabilization. Because it is digital, depending on what you're shooting, you might still see some distortion or softening in your image. But as you can see from our B-roll here, having the option for digital IS can save your handheld footage. Just this last week, I was shooting a wedding and TSA broke my Glycam in half, so I was forced to shoot the entire wedding handheld. I had digital IS turned on on the highest enhanced setting, and I was very pleased with the results. As long as you're being smart about your movements, this setting is a great option for handheld work. But if you're making fast movements or running with it, you'll obviously see a lot of warping, distortion, and softening. As for low light, when shooting video, the 1DX Mark III's ISO range goes from 100 to 25,600. Compare that to the 1DX Mark II, which only goes up to 12,800. That's double. And here's a side-by-side -side test with both the 1DX Mark II and the Mark III set to the 1DX Mark II's highest range of 12,800. As you can see from these results, Canon once again has stepped up the low light game for the 1DX line and made it much better with less noise and a sharper image. Moving on now to battery life, the Mark III is still rocking the same battery as the Mark II. As for video, we set the Mark II up against the Mark III and had them record until they died. And the Mark II died out at about two hours of straight recording while the Mark III went on for a full three hours. So according to this test, when shooting video without stopping, the Mark III can last about 50% longer than the Mark II. The next feature that Canon introduced and one that many think is a must for videographers is the ability to dual record. The 1DX Mark III comes with two CF Express card slots and Canon allows you to record RAW to one card and then MP4 to the second card. This feature is a fantastic safety measure in case one of your cards bonks out. However, it's important to note that the Mark III only lets you dual record video when you are shooting in RAW. As for the editing room, unfortunately, we have some big bad news for you. The 5.5K RAW footage, one of the coolest new features on this camera, is currently unreadable by Premiere Pro. The only way to edit these RAW CRM files is on Final Cut Pro X with a plugin. Hopefully Premiere updates this compatibility very soon. But as of March 2020, there is no way to edit this footage in Premiere. If a plugin becomes available or if an update occurs, we will post that in the description below, so check below for updates. Speaking of codecs, aside from shooting RAW, the 1DX Mark III has moved away from Motion JPEG, which was what the Mark II was sporting, and has gone to MP4 files. So not only can the 1DX Mark III film 20% faster, but its file sizes are 50% smaller than the 1DX Mark IIs. We set these cameras up side by side, both the exact same settings, and by the time the 1DX Mark II hit 500 gigabytes, the 1DX Mark III was only at 250. So they fixed the gigantic problem of stupidly huge file sizes, but the trade-off is that these new MP4 files are a lot harder on your editing software. So as far as editing workflow goes, this was a downgrade from the Mark II. So those are the main spec upgrades from the Mark II, and having a full frame option is probably my favorite feature and biggest reason why I upgraded. I just love having that extra shallow depth of field. But let's talk for a minute about the 1DX Mark III's camera body and button functionality and what has changed there. For us, the biggest new feature was the touchscreen. In the 1DX Mark II, the touchscreen only works for selecting focus points, whereas the Mark III's touchscreen is fully compatible for touchscreen navigation. They also added a smart controller for autofocus that allows you to move your finger around to select where you want the camera to focus without having to touch the screen or move the joystick point by point. This feature allows for incredibly fast focus grabbing for both photo and video. Also, as we've mentioned, the Mark III changed its memory cards to the new CF Express cards, which is honestly a huge bummer for us going from the Mark II to the Mark III because the CF 2.0 cards weren't cheap. 
but instead have to buy CF Express cards, which are just as expensive. Now these CF Express cards are incredibly fast and can handle the 5.5K raw internal recording. So no complaints about the cards themselves. Just a bummer that we have to buy completely new cards for this already pricey camera. And if you plan on shooting raw, you're probably going to want at least two 512 gigabyte cards. So make sure to factor that into the cost of getting this camera. As for dimensions, the Mark III is pretty identical to the Mark II, except for it being a little bit lighter. Yes, a small bonus to the Mark III is that it weighs 90 grams, aka 0.2 pounds less than the 1DX Mark II. And yes, the 1DX Mark III is also weather sealed. So all in all, yes, it is quite the upgrade from the Mark II in some areas and very similar in others. We've been shooting on it for the past few weeks and overall we do like it better minus the slower editing workflow. And as for price, it comes in at $6,500 currently. So you have to decide if the added features that we've mentioned here is worth the extra two grand that you'd pay for the Mark III. Now, if you do already own the Mark II, is it worth the upgrade to the Mark III? Depends on your needs. For some, yes, but for most, I would say no. Unless you really need the higher resolution or higher color depth and raw capabilities, which most of you, I think, are gonna be okay without. Having owned a RED camera for the past several years that can shoot 6K raw, I found that I use my 1DX Mark II way more because most of the content I'm shooting doesn't need to be any higher than 4K and doesn't need to be in raw. Plus, shooting in raw slows down my post-production workflow. So when I'm trying to pump out more multiple videos every week, it's honestly a lot easier just to use my 1DX Mark II. So ask yourself if the added resolution and color depth is necessary for your projects, because if not, I don't think any of the other upgrades are a big enough deal to warrant buying a whole new camera, all new memory cards, because you're looking at around $8,000 total price just for a few upgraded specs here and there. So I'm not sure I'd necessarily recommend that. Most clients aren't going to be able to tell a difference in the final product between these two cameras. So upgrading might not really pay off unless your clients are really picky about a high higher resolution or more color information. Now, if you don't already own the Mark II and are looking to upgrade from a different camera with much lower specs, then absolutely, I think this camera is worth it. I believe it's one of the best bang for buck cameras you can buy right now for what you get at the size and price. It's really hard to beat. This thing is a workhorse and now rivals many professional cinema cameras in both resolution, color depth, and overall image quality, but at a much smaller price, smaller form factor, and with added features that most cinema cameras don't have like autofocus, crazy good battery life, much better low light, and so on. So it is incredible to see camera technology continue to get better and better, making professional filmmaking a possibility at a much lower budget. But that's it for our thoughts on the 1DX Mark III. To check out more gear comparisons like this, check out fulltimefilmmaker.com, our ultimate online film school where we have hundreds of tutorials and a community of over 12,000 students to help you improve your skills and land higher paying video clients. Link in the description to learn more. But that's it folks, thanks for tuning in. Let us know in the comments what gear you'd like to see us review next. And yes, we will compare this to the EOS R5 when that comes out. So make sure to subscribe to see future comparisons and tutorials. And if you have any further questions, please let us know. Thank <laughs> you.